Well, one guy that doesn't have to worry about free agency is Malik Boynton of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He joins us on video chat today. There he is. He's ready to roll, looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Good day, Malik. How are you? Good day. I'm good. How you doing? Good. Where are you joining us from today? I'm in Eugene, Oregon right now. Beautiful Eugene, Oregon. Been there. Lovely part of the world. Malik, with this free agency that's going on in the CFL, how, how happy are you that you got a contract for 2020 and just kind of put your feet up and watch it all unfold? I mean, I'm, I'm extremely grateful to be in the position I'm in right now. But, you know, with the free agency going on, you know, I'm, I'm tapping in. I'm making sure Willie come back to Winnipeg. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's something that I feel like everybody in Winnipeg won't. And that's something I would love to have. So I'm still tuned in to the free agency, but I'm definitely grateful. And thank well, you. Willie is the number one guy that we're all watching and we're waiting. And you probably saw this morning that he says maybe he'll let his daughter decide for him because he's having such a tough time. Have you tried to influence right. him at all, Malik? Uh, not, not really, because at the end of the day, he is his own person. He is his own man. And whatever he feel like the best decision is for him and his family, like, I'm a, I'm a 100% supporter because he while while I was up there last year he was a great teammate great dude so wherever he end up I'm gonna be happy for him but you know I love to see him in that blue and gold again. Malik, I'll come back around to the 2020 Bombers, but I want to talk about you. Saw that you played at Austin P. We've got a pretty good friend from there by the name of Kyran Swerve Moore. You yes, must be sir. about the same age. You guys play together down there at Austin P. And if so, tell us about it. Yeah, me, me, me and Kyron came in the uh, Austin P together. We was in the same recruiting class. So the first day we ever met, and I kid you not, the first day we ever met, we had camp starting the next day, and we went out on the field, me, him, and my roommate, and we worked out at like midnight that night. And then from that day forward, like all we talked about was going to the league together. And although it ain't the NFL, uh, this this a great opportunity for both of us, and I just been super proud just sitting back watching him seize his opportunity, man. It, it, it give me butterflies, man. <laughs> well, you're uh, you're not that far behind him, and you'll get your chance here in 2020. And I understand his nickname at Austin P is Tiny, not mm -hmm. Swerved. Deron Carter gave him the nickname Swerve here. But tell us your story between Austin P and Winnipeg. What happened? Where'd you where'd okay. you go? Okay, so since Austin P, I had a tryout with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I was on the act, or I was on the fifty-two man roster for the Memphis Express, and then I was up in Winnipeg last year for training camp, and I got released right after the second game. And, and then, the how did it come? How did it come to be that you got signed again by them? And you know, when did that happen? <laughs> so I I reached back out to Winnipeg. Uh, I'd say closer to like November, maybe. And then I ended up going on the CFL PA agents list. And, you know, I, I signed with my guy, Fred, and t Fred make things happen. I don't know if y'all know too much about him up in the, well, reporters and stuff, but I know the athletes got a lot of respect and admiration for Fred and what he does for him. So he made it happen. I couldn't be more grateful for him. What's Fred's last name? I don't know how to say it. See, that's why I ain't say it. It started with a W, though. It's like <laughs> wine, wine. I don't know. I can spell it for you, though. Uh, my producer Clark's telling me in my ear, Wine Rock. We'll look it up. There I have go. no yeah. idea who he is, but apparently he's a magic man. So <laughs> magic 2020 man. with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, our analyst here, Mike Abu Meshri, can put the camera on him for guys uh, for a sec, guys. He's Bomber <laughs> alum. He's a <laughs> he's expecting a blow up of the Bombers. You said that, right? That this 2020 Bomber team will look nothing like the team that won the Grey Cup in 2019. That's what I've been calling it, but I also call them to win the Grey Cup and then blow it up after they won it. I've been calling that for a year, maybe two years. So talk, talk to us about the 2020 Blue Bombers, Malik, and what, what should we expect? I mean, we got a lot of work to do. It's, it's a target on everybody back. And first and foremost, I got to handle what I got to handle so I can be a part of it, you know? Uh, but... 2020, just knowing the coaches at Winnipeg and how the organi organization is ran, like, they're they going to always be contenders. We're going to always be contenders. We're going to work, and we're going we gonna to be in the mix, and we're going to pray that everything 
fall into place, and, and we back where we were last year. You know, your story, just before we let you go, because this is the important part, reminds me a little bit about I was with the Riders kicker on the weekend, Brett Lowther, and he said he'd been through so much personally in his life that anything that happens in the football field now won't phase him because he had uh, a tough past, and people probably wouldn't know that if you didn't know Brett. But you've had a tough past too, Malik. Is that how you look at the game of pro football and life, is that you've been through the worst or not? You talk about your story that way. Uh, I, I feel like my story just made me understand, like, like all pain is relative, you know, uh, emotional, mental, physical, it's all relative. So me losing my mom at a young age may affect the next person the same way if they lost their dog, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't put a gauge on like, like you step back and you're like, oh, he lost his mom. That's a big thing. But it's like when they say you go, the things you grow, go through, you can grow through. I firmly believe that because things can always be worse. Always. Like I, I I'm healthy. Uh, I got, I still have family that I'm close to and I love with all my heart. So I like the things I've been through just taught me how to look at things in a brighter light and be appreciative and grateful for what I do have. And, and that's, that's just really what it is. Like just being out on a pro football field, I could care less if it, like I'm going to do my best to perform at a high level of course, but when things get rocky, I'm going to still be the same person I am when things all good, you know? Absolutely. I.e. survivor's mentality. You've been through the worst and anything else is a bonus. So people are writing in like crazy, Malik. They love your attitude. Good on you, Malik. We never stop trying. That's from all our viewers uh, on the program today. So I appreciate getting to know yeah, you. I appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you on the CFL field in 2020. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, and tell, tell all the fans tuning in to go cop some perfect time and merchandise. You got me? Where can they find it? <laughs> uh, I, I put the link in my Instagram bio and I tweet it out tonight, but you, you should be able to find it if you type in perfect time and clothing on Google. I love it. We're all over it. Thank you, Malik. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I appreciate you. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.